QX TV to you on YouTube has been a real labor of love. But we're going to ask one little favor that you click on the like option below and the subscribe option below. That's right, like us and subscribe to us. And if you want to know every time we load up a video, you can click on the notification bell and that will let you know every time we load up a video. But if you don't want to necessarily know every time we load up a video, you just want to like us and subscribe to us, just click on those options below so that we can continue bringing you this channel for years to come. Thank you for watching QXT. Hello and welcome to another edition of Caribbean House Talk. And Caribbean House Talk, we always aim to bring you the issues from funny to curious and even tearfully serious. Oh boy, we have quite a show lined up for you today. Um, we are going to start off with our spicy dish. And I must say this, that with spicy dish, we often have little risque, um, spicy topics that may not be appropriate for small children. So if you have small children, for the spicy dish segment, it might be a good idea for you. It would be a good idea for you to let them read the room. Okay? So we're going to start off with spicy dish. And then we're going to do the, the help team section of the show where people ask us, you know, to weigh in on something. Uh, we're going to do the holistic section and then the news. So, hi ladies. Hello. Hello. Well, Lady H, you are such a grand dad. Well, oh spring. my God. It's spring. It's spring. I can tell. I have, I have sprung into spring. Oh, right. yeah. You have sprung galore. This is a beautiful uh, dress. Yeah, like the green. Mm -hmm. The green yes. is beautiful. And she even has the matching shoes. Yes. Oh, dear. Nice Lord, green. Lord, Lord. Yeah. She is quite the fashion. She's the shoe cats. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we got we to. <laughs> we need to get the shoe cat here. Uh, um, okay, so ladies, uh, we're about to roll into this edition of Caribbean House Talk. Are you ready to roll? Yeah, we're ready. You're ready? Yes. Okay, ready. so. I am going to do the honors and picking out the next topic. Ooh. Mm. Would you ever tell your relatives and friends your deep dark secrets? That is a spicy one. <laughs> mm. That's some What's considered deep dark secrets though? Things that you wouldn't want anybody to really know about that might be embarrassing to you and you trust would you trust your relatives or friends? No, I I, I never really <laughs> no. Mm -hmm. I, I usually use a measure. Would you be embarrassed if somebody knew about this? Okay? If the person if I say yes, then maybe that's not a time to tell. And I'll tell the truth. I could take up a few friends that I could tell, and I pretty much have had a lot of history with them. I knew they would not do something to harm me. Mm -hmm. But I will tell you the truth. A lot of friends I wouldn't trust, and you might be surprised. I don't trust a lot of relatives with that. Mm -hmm. Because I've been born with things that, not necessarily deep dark secrets, but you kind of, you know, have people into your home, um, among your family. You know, they're there. They're, they're, your business is open up to them, and then it goes and be discussed among the other family members, or it gets thrown in your face. So I would say, ask yourself, if you're going to tell somebody something, is this something that's going to embarrass you if you should speak about it? Or so he should, this person should speak about it. And then don't do it. You got to, even with, 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 um, with relatives, you got to be careful. As a matter of fact, I would venture to say, I think the relatives are the worst things to trust with things that are secretive. Yeah. You know what I said? Mm -hmm. If I have to talk to somebody about a deep, dark, dark secret, I go see a therapist. Yes. Okay, now you're talking. Okay, I go to that. <laughs> Listen, I'm telling you right now, I have a, a therapist. I've gone through divorce. Me, my children have been to her. I've gone through stress in my life. My family's stressing me out. This stressing me out. That's stressing me out. I call her up. I say, Listen, I need to see you. Mm -hmm. And I go and I, and I lay off on that couch and I tell my, my, I cry, I talk, I laugh, I whatever. You know what? If she go leak out what I tell her, she can lose her license. My secret ain't going anyway. That's who you tell your deep dark secret. Don't trust relatives. Don't trust friends. You got to have some special friend that you know you could trust like that. But like I said, I think I have some friends that I know they won't, they won't do me harm. Like, you know, this one right over here, I know she won't do me harm. I, 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 she got my damn love sometimes, but she won't do me harm. And she'll tell me the truth, okay? But um, there, there's just some things you, don't, you just don't tell people. Yeah, I, I feel that way too. There's some things you just don't talk. If mm -hmm. you need to talk, 
I should say good tell the tire priest or tell it to the Lord. Take it to the Lord. Take it to the Lord and pray. That's what I do. Yes. And I could talk to my husband, I could tell him anything, even if it's about him. I can tell him. Mm -hmm. And I establish that relationship with him because I know there are things that he does that I don't like that he needs to know. Mm -hmm. And if I'm afraid to talk to him, then I, who am I, who am I going to talk to? Right. So that part I do. But deep dark secrets, if I do have any, it's going to stay within the deep dark places. It's not. I think in a spouse situation, and you would know your spouse, I think in your spouse situation, you ought to know if your spouse is somebody with a blab them out or what have you. And you yeah. should be able to trust your spouse. I think that's the one but person for me, that you should dark, be able to trust. You for know? me, deep dark secrets are in, the reason why they call deep dark secrets. Right. Leave those things where they are mm -hmm. in the deep dark places. Let them stay there. I I, 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 I divorce to I, I divorce to I divorce Deep to men. Don't belong out there. I divorce to men, and bitter divorces. But there are things I would know about them, and of course they would know about me. I would never divulge okay. certain things. Okay. I don't do that. I do, I wouldn't do that. I think that person, those men, had a right to trust me as their spouse and know mm -hmm. that divorce or whatever. Anger, whatever, is not going to, you know, make me bring that up. Mm -hmm. But short of that, I think you got to be careful who you tell your stuff to. Exactly. Oh, mm -hmm. Lord, yeah. Lord, You don't Lord. tell these things. You got to be careful who you tell your stuff to. Please, you got to be careful. And, and the next thing I tell you, because I want you to hear, but I think there's a thing called discretion is the better part of valor. So you just hold things back. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. that's and true. Don't give people nothing that they'll use against you. That's I'm very good at that, you know. And um, I remember, I, I know that there are times when you make mistakes and things you do that you, sh you shouldn't have done or you shouldn't have said. Mm -hmm. What I do, I just go to God and say, look, I know you forgive me. I know as long as you forgive me, it's, it's all You're right. It's okay. Yeah. And I, uh, but I don't really, um, it, it, I don't really... Trust people to that extent. No. Yeah. I, when when I, I say kinda, something, I, I can't afford for you to, to repeat it, but I keep my story to myself. Deep, dark ones. I know. I, my I, stories to myself. Sorry that. I have a, had a situation just last night. I have clients that... I People bring people to me. That's how I get people in my life. And this lady brought a friend of hers to me, and... For some reason, they were supposed to meet somewhere and she didn't want the person to, she didn't want to go again and she said something to that lady to put her off and, you know, make up a story, so to speak. And she called me to let, tell me if she come there, don't mention her. I said, come on, do you think that I would do that? That's mm -hmm. none of my business. Exactly. What you have with her is between you and her. Mm -hmm. That has nothing to do with me. She would not even know. You were supposed to be coming to my house. Mm -hmm. And the way I set my things up, I don't have people meeting people there. Mm -hmm. Nobody can, if you meet somebody there, is if they really come late, late, and I didn't have time to cancel with you or mm -hmm. push you back a little. Mm -hmm. But people don't come, people don't meet people in my place like that. And if, I, if you tell me something about her, and then she came and told me the same thing, she'll never know that you told me. Well, you know, yes, what, what I don't like is when yeah. you you tell me something and says, don't, don't let tell. anybody know. Yeah. Then I go tell somebody. Uh, I don't tell want to I said, well, don't tell don't me. Don't tell me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I know you told attitude. somebody else yeah. that. Yeah. So, you know, we yeah. got to be very careful. And some people you know, just want to talk sometimes. Mm -hmm. And you will find those people every now and again, you, uh, one or two of those people popped into your, your circle. You just got to know how to deal with that person because they want to talk. And they think that they're telling you things, so you keeping it. But then they, sometimes they choose the wrong person to talk to, and that person can't hold the stuff that you are telling them. Mm -hmm. So, too, you have to be very discreet about discreet, what yeah. you say to your friends and how you say it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how you say it is important. Yeah. That's important. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's mm -hmm. important. Yeah. <sighs> this side of the table. Is it possible to love all your kids the same way? Yes. Yeah. For me, it's possible. It is possible. I I, I, I have no preference. Even though they don't think so. <laughs> right. They'll my never kids, think my so. boys don't think that. They, they that don't the, the I reason love they, the and the reason they don't is because I don't think you love them the same way. I think you love. I think you. This is my my, my experience. 
and I think we think we love them the same way, but here's the thing. You love them both all, all very much, but there are things about one child that would endear you more than some things another child, but that other child may have something. So I would not say, I would Okay. One of my child is in the audience. <laughs> I would say I love both. No, no. I, love, I would put my life down for both of these children. But I think there's a, a unique relationship between me and my son. Mm -hmm. And there's a unique relationship between me and my daughter. Exactly. And they're two different mm -hmm. parts. She's more like me, feisty, with her personality. So we have more clashes. Whereas the, the boy, he's more, he, he's more, you know, laid back. A little bit more introverted, and he would die for his mama. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? So I love them both very much. I can't say I love them the same way. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Because they're two different people, and they're different things about them that appeal to me in different ways. Boy, I felt the same pain when I was having them, so I had to love them the same way. <laughs> oh, that's a cheap the one. Ah, ah, ah. Now nah, come again. <laughs> But you know, oh gosh. But they, I, yeah. I have two boys too, and they're both two different people, mm -hmm. totally, totally different people. And I can tell you, in as much as it's, Trish, you said it, you love them both, but you have, the, you know, different um, feel, different ways, things, but the yeah. same way. I think that's where I am too, mm -hmm. because I do love my children dearly, but there's one that gives me grief, and there's one that give me grief you know they, they grieve you to that extent right. one more than the other mm -hmm. but when coming from them you know it's different energy but going to them from me it's about this you know same level because mm -hmm. I, what i would do for one i would definitely do for oh the yeah other. definitely so it is it is you know it's everything it's a given you're saying i i get it i don't think it has anything to do with love I, I think you, you, you love your children. Unconditionally. I, I, I love them unconditionally. Thank you. And whether I have a, you know, one may give me a little bit more problem than another one, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that I don't love them the same. I think what we're talking about are two different things. I you do think. love them the same, mm -hmm. but you do have relationships, different relationships with one that you may have with another. That's yeah. probably what I'm trying yeah. to say. Yeah. That's probably what I'm trying well, to say. Love is yeah. the same thing because but you I would do anything for both of them. them. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I have two boys, they're 10 years apart, believe it or not. Oh, wow. So the older one, we can talk about anything, and um, he's more mature. The, the younger one, you know, it, it, you yeah. can't say everything to him because he looks at life in a different way. Mm -hmm. But I do understand him. Where he's coming from, but I love them both. I, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I couldn't, I, I couldn't see my life without. <laughs> yeah, I think it's the, the kids that always say, "Oh, I think you love, you love her more." They're kids they will say always that. say stuff. Oh like my God, that. yeah. Well, I'm know? getting accused all the time that, yeah. "Oh, when I see Jojo get away with, it, I couldn't get away with yeah, her." Yeah, well, you were my tester baby. What do you expect? You were my first one. I was testing at you. <laughs> now I perfect it. That's it. Right. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yes. Uh, oh, there you go. Well, I want to see her twirl. She loves my twirl. twirl. Yes. It like, goes around and around. Okay, here we go. Ooh. Yes. What say you? Okay. Okay. <laughs> what would you do? If a love interest sends sexually explicit photos to you, mm -hmm. I send them back to you. So maybe I'm approved. I don't. I don't, I don't appreciate, appreciate that. that at all. I, I find don't that, that disrespectful. Very disrespectful. You know, and and maybe maybe it's an age thing. But you know what? My daughters will say the same thing. They find it disrespectful. That's disgusting. I, I, I don't want to see anything yeah, in a photo. We're in a relationship. That's one thing. I'm listen. These things don't just come out of my hat, a lot of them. I remember dating this girl. I, I don't even think we'll call it dating. We had been talking, and we had met up for coffee. And was trying to decide if I want to go on a date. You know, because I believe in the little coffee thing. And let me see if I could stomach you. Do you even know how to eat how the whole of uh, this thing here? I, I don't know. I just want to angle you up. 
before I go say I'm gonna sit down for a meal with you. Yes, this is everyone. We haven't table. gotten yeah, we haven't gotten we I know, right? <laughs> we haven't gotten we haven't gotten any there's not a, a smooch, nothing. But I tell you nothing. Nothing like that. Because I don't play that kind of stuff. Um and one day he decided to send me those type of pictures. And when I got really upset, what's the big deal? I do this all the time. I said, that's the problem. Don't call me back. And I blocked him. Mm. Do not call me back. You're disgusting. Yeah. Right. You don't know me like that. Right. What made you think? And you're going to tell me like, oh my God, I mean, what are you? It's just a little pick. Mm -mm. And that's the big deal. I do that all the time. I said, that's the problem right there. You're a damn problem. I don't want to see stuff like that. Disrespectful. I think that's disrespectful. It's disrespectful in all ways. To to me, it's like. But there are a lot of women who are not thinking like we are. So yeah. this is where these guys think that because this it's one okay. like it and she's getting there cute and right. smiling. <laughs> no, <laughs> the photo ain't gonna turn me on. Exactly. That's, that's You're me. looking like a product to me. That real point. thing. I, yeah. I don't want a photo. I don't want to see. I don't want to open my phone or anything and see something like that come in my face. Exactly. I lose total respect for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I agree. Never happened to me, but I agree. Me either. Mm -hmm. I don't want to. <laughs> me too. Mm -hmm. but that's Listen, I'm the only single one out here with three married women. Oh, okay. God. Mm -hmm. So, trust me. But it's not about that. You might have dated. You know, we have things that sometimes yeah. you date. Or, right. you know, you hear, you know about stories. And believe me, this happens more than you think. And I remember telling some. I was so shocked. I was mortified. So I was telling this this colleague, and she was like, "Oh my God, I kind of like them when they're a little fresh like that." I said, "Oh my God, really?" But I, I and she had, thought I was overreacting. I had an instance though that um, now that I look at it, that was disrespectful. I I was dating, you know, um, and my girlfriend, she felt that I I needed to meet someone because I was afraid to really, you know, get out there. So she sent this little man. She said, "Oh, you told us that story already." I told you about it. Yeah. Little man, <laughs> the wee man. He, I mean, he was much shorter than I was, and when oh, he sat on the couch, well, he's he walking. He came in person, but he came <laughs> and showed me a picture of what we would look like or something. I, I remember that door. story. Remember she told us about the show. The door. Oh, so God. you know, people. Came, and to mm. me, that was totally disgusting. disgusting. Yeah. Totally disgusting. Way. I mean, come on. Yeah. You um, want to impress me? That is not going to do it. That no, is sending me straight but, out the door. But I think sometimes the opposite sex, they don't think. They, they try, they test us. And, you and, can test and, me in other ways. I think that's their real self coming through. Yeah. It's you just somebody with poor control. You. This is who poor they really control. are. Poor self-control. Exactly. And I don't sometimes think you just have to count your stars that you find out early. Mm -hmm. Because you could have not seen that person before and get further into a relationship with them. Mm -hmm. And then when that stuff comes out, it becomes like a total turn off. And then you're going to look like you, this kind of person who da 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 da. And mm -hmm. yeah, put you in a bad thing. light. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so sometimes these things are blessing in disguise. And for me, those are those that God, God is shutting. Don't try to open them. Right. Let that man go. Well, to me, you, you're gone anytime you do something like that. They, yeah. No, we have no respect for you when you do that. If you want to have a little sexy conversation with me and you're just trying to touch me, say, oh, if I giggle or whatever, that's one thing. But sending me that, I don't that's, think so. No, and not. even that, I don't like vulgar, vulgar guys. I still feel like you got to get to know me and show, and show some respect. And people talk a certain way to each other when they've been in a relationship for a while mm -hmm. and tease each other and what have you. But when you don't even know me like that, and mm -hmm. you're getting that, that is very disrespectful. That mm -hmm. is not nothing that's gonna endear you to me. Right. You know. You know, I'm too grown. Yeah. I'm too grown. You that, know, I am too grown for that nonsense. Mm -hmm. And I don't even. When I was a kid or a young woman, that didn't even appeal to me. Why would that appeal to me at my age? Are you kidding me? No, it's disgusting. Okay. Absolutely disgusting. All right, we're going to take a break, and when we come back. We're going to go into our Dear Health Team section of the show. We'll be right back. All right. You are watching QX TV, Cultural Experience Television. We will be right back. Visit Elias Restaurant, a unique Greek-Caribbean fusion restaurant where the food is heavenly, the service divine, and the ambience mesmerizing. Enjoy bakes and saltfish, goatee, jerk chicken, curry chicken, stew chicken, Stew fish, oxtail, curry goat, stew turkey, pea soup, comfort soup, sour beer, ginger beer, Slovakia dinners, clubhouse sandwiches, 
and so much more. Visit Elias Restaurant, located at 3310 King Street in Toronto, Canada. Bringing QXTV to you on YouTube has been a real labor of love, but we're going to ask one little favor, that you click on the like option below and the subscribe option below. That's right, like us and subscribe to us. And if you want to know every time we load up a video, you can click on the notification bell and that will let you know every time we load up a video. But if you don't want to necessarily know every time we load up a video, you just want to like us and subscribe to us, just click on those options below so that we can continue bringing you this channel for years to come. Thank you for watching QXT. You are watching Caribbean House Talk. Okay, welcome back to Caribbean House Talk. And we are about to do a Dear Help Team section. Dear Help Team, a Beverly Hills brat flipped out with her mom, it's a true story, reduced her $5,000 allowance to $1,000. What would you do if your kid acted like this? Oh, you're giving me chills. They won't be getting that to begin with. <laughs> you won't be getting a thousand. Well, you have to remember that, that there's a rich, there's a rich people, people yeah. About. That's the problem right there. But that's the problem. That's the problem. Because mm -hmm. what does a child need $5,000 $5, $5, a month? month? Now, I don't know how old the child was, but I'm um, taking this as a kid. Even, you know? the child... Living in your house is still a cheap. You, you don't have any bills to pay. So what the hell do you need five thousand dollars for? No, that's beyond. Think about it as um, but we have to let's put it put it in perspective. Again, they are rich people. So to us, a thousand, five thousand is a ton of money. Okay, but you know, to them, to it's them, it's really not. But my thing is, you flip out because I reduce your money. I take it all away. Is you don't deserve anything. Mm -hmm. Don't you. show your behind on me. Mm -hmm. That's just the way I am. Yeah. So my my son gets a little allowance. A little allowance. Gee. Um, but I always let him know. I don't have to pay you to live in my house. I'm giving you this so that certain little things you need. Something he wanna on Friday nights, he wanna have a little pizza so he can play his little video game with his friends, you know. Okay, so you got your little money and you could get that. You may want to go get a special deodorant to pay yourself or something. But I don't, I want, I always make sure he understands this is not payment. I don't pay you to live in my house so I can take care of you. In my day, if I could tell my mother anything about allowance, my mother don't know the meaning of allowance. If I told my mother allowance, she'd have given me one damn slap, eh? One damn slap. You understand me? Because she feeds me, she also makes me not what the hell she needs to pay me for. You know? It's not, don't matter, need to pay me. it's not a matter of paying. When my kids were growing up too, they got they got allowance. But, but this is America. Allowance this is America, was right? Like a food thing. They never liked the the food in school. So and we they don't want to carry lunch. Sometimes they ask for sandwich mm -hmm. off and on, but most of the times they want to buy lunch. So that's where they got twenty dollars a week, both of them five dollars a day. For mm -hmm. the month, and mm -hmm. if they come within that period of time and ask for more money, it's a no. You go to school hungry. You're not getting any more. Mm -hmm. That's your allowance for the month, and it is what it is. Right. If you want a sandwich, I'll get up in the morning and make you a sandwich. I'll make it in the night, but that's about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's how my allowance story goes because I don't think children should even get allowance. That's an American thing. Yeah. I mean, I'm saying that. That's an American thing. I'm not saying anything wrong with it, Caroline. No, but I don't think. Why do they not say Caroline? Because I don't know. No, I don't agree with that. Because I don't know anybody who got allowance. I don't know that. That's what I'm saying. Okay. So I don't know if that's. Is it a generational American thing? I have no idea, but I don't know. My kids got allowances. Okay, but you didn't why get allowances? Why, why say it's an American thing? Well, like I never said, thought about nobody, it until I got here. Oh, okay. Well, nobody I knew mm -hmm. growing up got allowance. So maybe it's My an American own generational thing. Didn't get allowance, and I don't think many of their friends got it either. So I don't, I, I don't know. I don't even know where the word came from. Maybe it's because of you, maybe American TV. I, I have no I idea. Know. You know what I'm saying? I never heard of it. I, I thought it was I never just, heard of it. it yeah, it's but. just crazy, you know. But the thing also, you know, my kids from the time of 14, they work. I didn't have to give them anything. You know what no, I'm saying? They work. they earn their money, and I made sure like, you save your money, and that's how you spend. And if they want something from me, 
then you know I would get it. But I just I just didn't do the allowance thing. Mm. And well, I think I've heard them. that probably from TV more. You know, Maybe that's because what we they got set that know. nonsense. But that nonsense, Benson. There is no such thing. I don't even say the same thing today that you were here about all of that word. Maybe Give an now, allowance? Maybe now. now because today, if America sneezed, the rest of the world catch a cold. So instead of business, they're watching American TV, they're doing the same thing we're doing here. But um, I never in my life, if that concept seemed weird, mm -hmm. that you wouldn't even think your parents should give you money and they're feeding your housing, your clothing. Yeah, that's crazy. You know? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I did the allowance yeah. thing. I, maybe I'm just one of those... Bushy. <laughs> I just felt that I felt that um, I don't know. I just felt that my kids needed to have that allowance. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's, I don't know why, but when, maybe, you maybe know, no, I, as I look back, and we lived in, when the kids, the friends would come to my house, they thought we were rich, and maybe because of the way I, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know. Mm -hmm. We were just as poor as they were, but but, but my kids were going out there Friday evening and buying the old big pizza for the whole company down the street. Mm -hmm. I mean, but I made sure that they didn't have to go out and steal mm -hmm. because a lot of the kids in that neighborhood were stealing. Mm -hmm. They go to the supermarket, sometimes you see the cops pulling them, or, you know, sort of thing. So, I just had to do my part, and, and I, I, I have not here. regretted it. I felt good that I did it, you know. They were raised here? They were raised here, yes. Um, and your kids are older, so, oh wow, so you were doing it even by them? Yeah, I was, I made sure there was an allowance, um, yeah, I, I, my budget was there, and I made sure that the allowance was in the budget. Did you so, call it an allowance? Well, I, that's what they call it, and I, I knew of allowance then. I knew of a lot of parents who were talking about allowance, mm. so that's what they called it, you know. Wait a minute. Because yeah. you can't say, hey, what am I paying them for? Right. So that's why I was tell Jojo, I'm not paying you. Well, in, in Jamaica, we call it pocket money. Mm. No oh. pocket change. Pocket change. You're, you're giving them Half a dozen of one, six of the other, so same it's thing. it's more like so pocket something. change, you mm. know, but my kids, you know, they the kids are honest though they were rich kids. You know, I wonder if this is more of a something that we Caribbean people, when we come here, this is our idea of what Americans do. I wonder. I don't think so. Because I, I never heard so. of it until I came when here. I, I never I, heard of it. No, when I was in high school, growing up home, I had allowance. I okay. would get it. My mother would give it to me. And, and it was not you also it was baby. Me. pocket money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pocket money me because I remember in Jamaica yeah, my grandma didn't say that the pocket right. that money. word allowance. Here is some pocket money, mm -hmm. but is is here they start the allowance thing. So it depends on a pocket change. I give them a little pocket change because we're yeah. going to a function or going somewhere. But I can't always, remember my parents, I would not even imagine my parents saying Oh, I'm gonna give you every like Georgia got a monthly basis. Yeah, he gets a monthly allowance. Right? Mm -hmm. Um Raquel got up until she started working at, at 16, 15 or 16. Um, so I did, because everybody was talking about it. And, and I think I always felt like I wanted to have something, not a lot of mm -hmm. money. I, I used to give her like a little $10. In Jojo, they, he gets 25 bucks a month. Okay. Um, so... Um, I think we gotta get him more money. That's not enough. <laughs> yeah. I hate you only say that because he's, he's your doctor. Even if you have a pocket in Jamaica, I got... I got my pocket yeah, every yeah, week. My I uncle and my change. father, we call it pocket money. Mm -hmm. And every week, my my father would give me a, those days was twenty five shillings, and my uncle would give me twenty five shillings. I always had money. Mm -hmm. I mean, I always got pocket money. So I guess because I was raised that way, I just felt obligated to my yeah. children to, mm -hmm. to, to give them yeah. the same. I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with it, you know. No, no. I mean, I think that, it, you know, in the right the right way, you're, you're trying to teach your child, I would hope, some responsibility. That, you, you know, what they get. you have, I'm giving you some money, this is for you to handle the things that you want. You, you shouldn't come to me for anything else. Right. Spend it in the right way. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's true. Yeah, and, 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 and okay. It's not work, but what are you doing to be to show that you're responsible? Are you putting out the garbage? 
Are you going to show up with the snow if it's snow outside? Are you going to, you know, maybe clean my car? Or load the dishwasher? They need to be doing chores too. Well, yeah, the chores. Well, my boys would clean the car and 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 use the, the what do you call it there outside, the grass. Mm -hmm. But my little one, that's, that was so funny that I look back now. When you give him the allowance, he, he, he dug a hole in the backyard and, and buried it, you know. Put, you serious? put them, his, his money in the backyard until it got to a certain amount and he took it out. That's what happened to the piggy bank? Nobody knew. That was his piggy bank. He never trusted anybody with his money and he would dig that hole. <laughs> so we had a flood one time. Oh, dear. I couldn't find the damn hole. Oh. In the backyard. Oh my gosh, you had to have a man come and dig up the backyard just to find this guy. His oh. money was put Did in he think it would grow? Did he find the money? He eventually found his money, oh but it was so damn wet. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but that's where, that's how he always saved his money. Wow. In in a hole in the backyard. Wow, interesting. Mm. Wow, I've got to get a little wet the things. It was interesting. Mm -hmm. And I never knew why, you know? Wow. Yeah, I don't I don't have anything against it. If that's what um parents do, you give your kids allowance and shit business. But I know that but, if I give my this, kids something yeah, and, and, this, and then you wanna you wanna have a hissy fit over it, I'll I, take everything away. Mm -hmm. of it. You're not getting any more. She, and I would imagine I didn't read the full story, but I would imagine she was very disrespectful why her mother yeah, I don't know. I would not took away. That. That, that, and if the mother cut it, there must have been a reason. Must be a reason, you know. That's rich people problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's rich people. Rich people problem. problem. Mm -hmm. We're not there yet. <laughs> that's rich people problem. I don't, think I, I, th I don't think I'll ever get that because I think you have to be you have to teach children a sense of responsibility and you're not gonna teach them that if you're putting a thousand or five thousand dollars on them or even a thousand dollars. What the hell do you need a thousand dollars for? You're not paying rent in my house? Yes, so much children out there need food and mm -hmm. place to live and clothing and all that and they carry on with oh god it's just one ridiculous. of the things i plan to do with my children is mm -hmm. like on a thanksgiving or christmas to go to a soup kitchen and solve mm -hmm. uh people because they need to understand that you know life isn't a better rules out there for everybody yeah That's so that thing. we just we just really pamper them too much okay my next tech topic um for the help team their help team are you scared of dying? And I want everybody to be honest. Are you scared of dying? The thought of death scares you. Scare you. How I die? I mean, if I don't want anybody to stop me to death or shoot me. But I'm not scared of dying. I'm not scared of death. I worry about dying. So the process of how am I going to die? Of course, I don't want, like you said, I don't want to be stabbed, I don't want to be shot. I don't know what it's going to be. It's going to be what it's going to be. But I'm not scared of death itself. Because no, I think no. that is going to be one of the most peaceful things. Problem is nobody comes back to tell you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's what true. it's not really scared of death. But I just read of something on Facebook this week where this woman went, she 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 went into a coma and she went to this place and um, she saw Jesus Christ or something like that. And I, I mean, she came back to tell our story. You know that and. It's, it's nice to read those comments. Mm -hmm. People, <laughs> people I, I, told her to go drop dead now because she, nothing goes like that. A, a lot of people are not believing that mm -hmm. something like that can happen. Mm -hmm. But I think it can happen. You know, you can get out of body. Um, what makes you think it can happen? I think it can. I, I don't know. I just feel that there's a sometimes if something happens after. You 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 go off in that whatever spirit world and and God is showing you something and it's, and and you come back he make you come back I don't know but but I I've heard so many stories my, you know? I believe anything can happen no I, I believe that also my, yes that things mm -hmm. yeah and and just as you asked her what makes her think it can happen what makes you think it can't but my we, thing we can't is can't disprove one way or another no we right. can't but my thing is in the bible you say you don't see the face of God and Unless you're dead, I'll move up into heaven. Or but that's God. God but, can do um, anything. Nothing is right. impossible. I am not arguing God, but I'm just telling you what I believe and what I read. And 
it can I don't call us so. and send us back. If God can do anything, and that's why I believe, you know. But nobody can, ever came back to tell us anything. When this we woman came know. back, mm. and she's dead no, with she, me. She, she, she and it's not, just, not being it's not just her. Mm. They were caught, there was even Dr. Oz, I saw a few people came in to say where they, they went and they came back. Uh, whatever, you know, I don't know. And I'm, I, it's not for me to really not believe. I, I believe that things can happen. But I'm not afraid of, I'm afraid, I don't want anybody to shoot me or, or stab me because I might be suffering at that point. I just want to, I always tell Irma, I know how I'm going to die. Mm -hmm. I tell them all the while, I'm just, and I think this was told to me years and years ago, you're just going to go to bed, lie down and die and never come. I tell people that all the time, that's, that's, that's the, the way I, I don't know how I, I, I feel I go in my heart, heart, I go heart, heart attack to in die. my sleep. That's what I, that sounds mad. And because I tell my family, tell they keep that. coming to look to see if I if I oversleep. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, but I tell them all the time. I say I would if I had if I could pick how I die, a good old heart attack in my sleep. Like I go to sleep and just never wake up. Not even a heart attack. Just go sleep and just don't. Well, wake up. gonna kill you. No, you know? no. And, and in the end of the day, we all die from heart failure and our heart fail. What I don't happens. think anything has to kill you. I think God just take you when I'm ready. Right, but your heart fails at that point. Your heart right. stops at that point. So so that's why when people die and you can't find anything wrong with them, maybe they die of old age, you put heart failure because your heart fails at some point. Well, the, the, the coroner have to find something, mm -hmm. put something to a name. But, um, but um, I again, I'm not scared of debt. I, I literally, as I sit here, I'm not afraid of debt. Yeah. I am concern of the process of dying, dying that yeah. that's what's really yeah. what you know like you wonder what is it going to be and is it going to be one of those things where i suffer you know but after that I, I i i pull myself together and say you know what you have no control over that mm -hmm. so you can't stress yourself right and and you know there are things in this world that we don't know mm -hmm. there's sort of lots of mysteries you know that we don't know mm -hmm. and you just have to just Forget about them and go keep on living. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You know why um, I'm a little, like, being a little morbid, if you will? This year, 2019, I've had so many deaths in my family and circle of friends. Yeah, and I mean, yeah. young people, 40s, yeah. 50s. I just got bored the day before yesterday, my cousin, my first cousin um, in Trinidad, young woman. I mean, she's, I think, it's a, She's about 64. She looks like in her early 40s. She looks good. Because she married a young man, so she had to keep herself up for that man. Yeah. And she kept herself up good. And where, where the situation? And just got word that she passed. And last time I saw her was about four years ago at my mom's twin sister's mm -hmm. funeral in Trinidad. And it, it was one of those situations that wasn't pleasant in the beginning because she acted a certain way I didn't like. But uh, you know me, I'm not one to hold things inside. And I went right to her face and tell her I didn't appreciate. Mm -hmm. And after that, we hugged it out. We hugged it out, and then she came to visit me every day I was there. And I said, wow, thank God that I didn't leave it in a bad place. Mm -hmm. And then I had my son's, um, the first person that babysat my, my son mm -hmm. um, when he was a baby and took care of me when I came out. I had my C-section and still mm -hmm. had my stitches. She passed away at 44. Mm -hmm. um, there was another person who passed away in January in uh, pancreatic cancer. She was about 58, yeah. and a person in my life. And there's someone I know from a former colleague. The the um, oh my God, she is the was the epitome of health. If you look at her, young, vibrant person, she would have been about somebody my age or maybe even slightly younger. Mm -hmm. Again, some I think it's pancreatic. I can't can't remember, but. And you're saying to yourself, my God, where's this stuff coming from? Like, what is killing us like that with all this cancer and this and that? And in, in my cousin's case, it wasn't cancer. She, but there's a time and there's a time for everything. It's Ecclesiastes five, I think. He tells you there's a time, there's a time to mourn, there's a time to die. So I guess maybe that's how I see it. There's a time. There's a lady in the church. Irma, you might have seen her. She always wears a hat. Very light skinned lady, heavy set, always yes. comes to church. Um, she just got up and died yesterday. I mean, just died. Well, so, we go to the same church, so which, who are we talking about? The one that sits behind me? Yeah, she had always, always had a nice hat. hat. Yeah. No, a broad hat. Yeah. 
light complexion, very yeah. dresses nicely, you know, wear it. The woman went home and died. I mean, so we have to the, the thing at church, we all sit in our sp in our speed. I know we all have our set separate. I don't know who sit in back of me. I only I, oh no, of me. I, I, I don't know. I I take and, stop and when I go in. I take a look to see, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I'll take a quick look when it's that time to meet and greet. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. You know, but I, I don't, I don't. Really know the people in that church. Is it? The, I can't believe it's the person you're telling me. Yeah, that the I woman think. died. So it's. I, I mean, just we we. Somebody called me and said, I can't believe. I said, yeah, I can't believe. Because this is, this is going. We don't know the reason why people are going. I guess she was sick at one mm -hmm. point and then... Yeah, she was sick and then she came back. Yes. So... So it was sudden. I mean, don't be surprised about death, please. Don't be surprised. <sighs> because it comes. It really does Even though come. we know it's going to happen, it's still yeah, going to be Yeah, we're human that beings, you know, punch. but... Um, it's, it's, it's hard, yeah. but, it, you know... Yeah. We expect it, and they, and you know, just the younger people are going. <laughs> younger people, I mean, yeah. I'm saying, God, you just yeah. fly over me and take. You know, me. I, I think I live, I live a ripe old age. You know, I'm a ripe old, but I'm, I'm a mature age. My, let's be honest, I think my better years would be behind me, but hopefully, I still have some good ones ahead of me, mm -hmm. not as much. And um, you know, <sighs> I'm going to live to be 105. Yeah, because you have longevity in your family. My, uh, my I'm, I'm more, more than you. you. She keeps telling me she's going to be a hundred. So that's yeah. I want to live to be a hundred if I have good health. Yeah, that's the thing. You, well, you, you have to have good health. Good so health. You, you can't want to live to be a hundred if you have health. good. You have to have the good health and say I am going to live to a hundred. Yeah, 100. I don't want anybody poking me. No, no, if not with the niggas and all Just that. Just claim it. Y'all you know, know me and my little hypochondriasis, Jesus Lord, I shouldn't be talking about some of this stuff. Jesus Lord, it's, it's not a bigger hypochondriac than this woman you see right in front of you here. Okay? Oh, I don't let it talk about certain illnesses because it's in a minute my body is giving those symptoms. You're serious. I, I just, I'm dead serious. So. You're serious? I don't. I don't. <laughs> Listen, I tell you all, this show is one of my therapy. <laughs> okay. I get to talk about stuff. I get to be totally honest with the audience. Um, I, I have a word, I, I, but you want to know the truth though, I, I think with hypochondriasis, you don't get rid of it, but you learn to manage it. Manage. So, and the days when I had it, and I didn't know there was such a thing, I didn't know what was happening to me, I would really go through this shit where I thought I had these things. Um, that was nerve wrecking, but when I got to the point where I'm like, ah, I'm just being a hypochondriac, I could laugh at myself. Yeah. But, Trish, at the beginning of the year, this year, I remember I woke up. I didn't go to church New Year's Eve, so I got up early the next morning. I keep a diary. I record everything in my diary. So I wrote a list in this diary. This is 2019. These are the things I plan to do mm -hmm. for my health. My eye first. My, my, what is my eye, my ears, then my mouth. And it, it, my liver, my kidney, I'm going to have them flush. So these are all these things that, you know, Trisha can't pass the eyes. Up until now, I can't pass the eye, the eye thing yet. My eye closed down, I couldn't see out of it. Oh I have God. to be going to the eye doctor every week to have them put your hand drain the system. I mean, it, it, mm -hmm. I can't pass the eye to go to the ears. <laughs> my, <laughs> There's a time for everything. That's what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Time for everything. Time for the eyes. You know, but, but here I am planning my life, you know, mm -hmm. oh, and and you get set back. So. That's right. And that's life. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's what I'm learning. Not to take things so seriously. It's just like I learned to laugh at myself. Thank um, you. I have a sense of humor about stuff. Not take everything so serious. Be able to get a chuckle out of something. And, ho and, and be honest about stuff because sometimes there are people who are watching the show who would have... A, an issue with um, sorry about that. I'm off. Yeah. about to turn this off. Um, I turned it down, but I'm about to turn it off. So, you know, the people who what was I saying? Lord of Mars, you know, when you get old age, it's a funny thing. I used to that. About something. Mm. Um, leave that to me. <laughs> you're a spring chicken, honey. <laughs> what was I saying before? Before I was really interrupted by my, my cell phone, you're talking about your hypo. Oh, I'm, I've already been past that. I am a hypochondriac. But I, I think for me, um, I think for me, I just learned to take things in stride. Um, not take myself so seriously. Be able to share things. Be able to 
My honesty is my therapy. I just like to be totally honest. Yeah. Again, it doesn't mean deep dark secrets, like we said earlier in another show. Mm -hmm. then, um, another, um, was that this show last yeah. year? We were talking about, um, about deep dark secret. Deep dark secret. Um, I wouldn't, the things you should never be sharing with anybody. If I want to share, I will share with a, with a, with a, with a, with a therapist. Yeah. But, but I learn my, my truth in terms of just being honest about certain things, how I feel about things. It's my best form of therapy. But I am yeah. scared of the dying process, not death itself. That's to bring it back to this. When dying comes, I will deal with it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'll be scared enough. And I may not be. You may be thinking you're going to. I, again, not dead. I'm not worried. I, I know I'm going to die one day. Yeah, that, you're going to pay taxes. You're going to die. I'm not worried about that. I hopefully I live a long life. If not, I got to deal with whatever. But you always worry about what the process of you dying would be, and then you have to put it back, bring it back under control, and say, um, you know, um, it's going to be what it's going to be. You have no control over it. Why waste energy stressing That's over That's exactly it? what I'm right? saying. When the time comes, when I'm dying, if I'm, if I, in any way, I'm dying uncondition, unconventionally, mm -hmm. other than just, then I'll be like, deal with what's mm -hmm. going on at that time. Right. But until then, why waste time thinking about something that might never even happen mm -hmm. in that way that you're thinking about it? Mm -hmm. So. That I don't dwell on because I know I have to die one day. It's going to happen. When that time come, I deal with it then. It says worry because is a I'll very taxing burden. There's a saying, as I think I have it in my office. Trust me. little thing. Worry is a very taxing burden. It's a tax you should you do not have to pay. Exactly. Because you're worrying, what is that going to do? That's, these are the little things yeah. I need to kind of motivate and tell yeah. myself, you know, you're stressing over something, that's not going to help you. So... Why stress? Why stress? And stress is a secret killer. It can kill you like that. Mm -hmm. And we stress every day without even knowing that we're stressing. Mm -hmm. So when you are conscious of the fact that you might be stressing, pull it in. Pull it back. Pull, pull it, it back. back. I, think, I think that's the thing with life. You're going to have your thoughts. You don't have to go chasing them down a rabbit no. hole. So when, you know what I do? When I, when I start to worry about something, or I find myself something at night, something going on, and I talk, got up to go to the bathroom, and then I can't get back to sleep, and I say, the crazy is coming in my head. Oh, there I go with the sh mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm watching you. You took it right off. <laughs> um, I usually have this thing where I just say, the devil is a liar, or Satan, you're a liar, not or I, be, I rebuke you, not today, you know? Mm -hmm. And I just don't deal with it. That's you know? my thing. My thing is not today. Go and come back after it. Well, I've been home because of my eyes. My eyes been bothering me. So what? I, I'm bi I'm a busybody, as Irma knows. But you don't answer your phone. I, I call you at any time. I know, because guess what? I am busy <laughs> making wine in the basement. She just wants to place the phone is being made. <laughs> and I'm busy doing, you know, like, just, that's my therapy, mm. to, to do something. Answering the phone is not my therapy. Mm. <laughs> no, so, so. She's gonna be down there. No, I'm not. I'm so not. No, I'm just doing what I'm supposed to do. Mm. You know, but you you cannot worry and make it a, be a part of your life. I have a book that I would love for you to read mm. about worry. You you have to fast on worrying mm. and feast on. Whatever, that's the opposite of worry. Mm -hmm. you, know, so being, be, be, you know, having an optimistic look. Being you faithful, have to. you know. Yeah. Have I to. think a lot of worrying is lack of faith. And I would be the first person to say that. So that's why I always bring it back and say, you do not, you're not exhibiting faith right now. Mm -hmm. If you're worrying, you don't have faith. Well, that's true. Mm -hmm. You have to stop it. We're well, human, but you got to be able to stop yourself when you find yourself going on. Don't go down that rabbit hole. Yeah. All right. So we're going to discuss... The uh, holistic health, we're going to discuss the benefits of apple cider vinegar. And let me say this. When we give these holistic I I um, ideas, or we, we mention them, we're not telling you to go for go your doctor's um, advice or medication. Whatever you do, do not, oh, well, you know what? Trisha, the, the Caribbean house doctor said that apple cider vinegar is good for this, that, and that. So let me just um, forget about what my doctor, no. Don't be foolish, okay? I, I, as I'm sitting here, who's very much into holistic stuff, 
I take my high blood pressure medication, I'm not playing with that. If I was diabetic, I'm going to take that medication, I'm not playing with that. And if I wanted to try something holistic, I would discuss with my doctor. Mm -hmm. A lot of what we mentioned here, these are things for people who you're having your good health and you want to probably incorporate, like I have family history of hypertension, diabetes, you want to incorporate certain things in your health, into your health, health regimen. Um, and hopefully it could help to, you know, not make you as prone to certain things, but you don't want to push your medication or your doctor aside because I'm telling you about some holistic stuff, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so the benefits of apple cider vinegar, um, it lowers blood sugar. It is believed to lower blood sugar. It, it is believed to promote cardiovascular health with your heart. It detoxes the liver. Aids in weight loss. That doesn't mean you go eat a whole house of food and then think it's going to help you. It cleans the colon. It is believed to restore the digestive system. It helps with men menstrual irregularity. So you woman with a regular kind of menstrual cycle and, and issues there, that might help. It lowers cholesterol. So those are some little things that happen inside of it. And now it, it does, if you're drinking that thing straight, it does, it, it could mess up your enamel to your teeth. A lot of people don't realize that. So for me, I don't drink it every day. If I think I have a little bit too much sugar, sugary stuff, like I said, I have the family history of diabetes, I go and I get uh, one or two tablespoons or teaspoons, I put in some water, I drink it, and then I wash my mouth, wash it down with some water. Mm -hmm. And that's how I do that. All right, so it's a good little health tip. I have some of them covered on Dr. Oz. And, and I don't have his exact words, but he was saying that water flushes you, but this thing cleans out all the yeah, gook and stuff. So it's, yeah. you know, it really does. Because sometimes I can tell when I have too much sugar. You know, my sugar level is feeling a little off, and uh, I'm not diabetic, but you know, you get a certain age, your body can't tolerate certain sugars. So I want to eat some cake or whatever. Mm -hmm. I come down and say, get myself some apple cider vinegar, put in some water, drink it, dress that down with some water. And you can even put it on your salad if you want. You know, there are things that you, you know, can do with it. Do it yeah. You know, I pour a little on my salad. Can you put it on escovitch fish? Oh, yeah, you can do it. You know, that's vinegar. Mm -hmm. Do a little bit of that. It's strong, but, you know, you can use it. Um, yeah, you wouldn't put a lot, maybe, you know, a tablespoon so or less. Yeah. Right. You know, because it, it'll give things a kind of tangy taste mm -hmm. to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. All right, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to be covering news of the day. We'll be right back. You are watching QX TV, Cultural Experience Television. We will be right back. Visit Elias Restaurant, a unique Greek Caribbean fusion restaurant where the food is heavenly, the service divine, and the ambience mesmerizing. Enjoy bakes and saltfish, roti, jerk chicken, curry chicken. Stew chicken, stew fish, oxtail, curry goat, stew turkey, pea soup, cowfoot soup, sour beer, ginger beer, Slovakia dinners, clubhouse sandwiches, and so much more. Visit Elias Restaurant, located at 3310 King Street in Toronto, Canada. Bringing QX TV to you on YouTube has been a real labor of love, but we're going to ask one little favor, that you click on the like option below and the subscribe option below. That's right, like us and subscribe to us. And if you want to know every time we load up a video, you can click on the notification bell and that will let you know every time we load up a video. But if you don't want to necessarily know every time we load up a video, you just want to like us and subscribe to us, just click on those options below so that we can continue bringing you this channel for years to come. Thank you for watching QXT. You are watching Caribbean House Talk. Welcome back to Caribbean House Talk, and we are about to go into our news section, news of the day. Oh, Lord, 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 news of the day. The outcome of the Trump, Russia, and obstruction probe. What's your take? Honestly, so this I... week, if you're not somebody, let me just set this up a little bit. So if you're not somebody who is um, in the news or watches the news, not in the news, but who watches the news, um, there was a probe for nearly two years going on where they had a special counsel investigating our President of the United States for possible collusion with Russia and obstruction of justice. 
And this week, after maybe two years, uh, we, we, he, he, the president appointed an attorney general, who many believe was handpicked because he felt that maybe he might have an influence with the special counsel, because they're friends, they're kids of friends, and all of that. And I don't know if that made a difference. People could be friends and still do their job. But um, he came back after two, maybe two years, and he said there's not any evidence that there was collusion but that he was not exonerating the president from obstruction, but he didn't quite feel like there was enough to do, do something with it um, from the special um, counsel's right. uh, perspective. So Democrats are up in arms, you know. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, uh, okay, I mean, we should be we should be relieved that okay he wasn't sitting there plotting with Russia. I've said all along though that I feel that Americans voted a man into office based on them feeling that he does this television show. He's supposed to be a good businessman, even though he has a bunch of bankruptcies in his past business past, and they thought this was going to do great things for the economy, mainly white Americans, and. When they realized that basically, in my opinion, what they put in is a mess, they wanted to just blame something on Russia. Russia and America, maybe they both interfere in each other's business to some degree. I don't think Russia did this. Okay? Do I think his obstruction? Yes. Do I think that he has some shady stuff and a lot of shady people around him? Yes. And I don't think you can have everybody around you be that dirty and you're clean. And they're going to touch on you in some kind of way. Now, maybe you're clever where you have on a shield to protect when they touch you from it touching your skin. You get my little drift where I'm going here. Mm -hmm. So you're, you, you, know, you have enough money, you can pay people to do the dirty work for you, and then they go down, and then you're good. But how you have all these people left and right around you with all these indictments, and you are clean? I don't think so. Now, of course, he came out and said, oh, I've been totally exonerated. No, you have not. No, you have You know what? In, in one of our other segments, I was saying with um, Jesse Smollett, I thought he was saying that he was exonerated. No, it wasn't. I just thought about it. It wasn't that this guy was saying he was exonerated, the president of the United States. And the, the, the attorney general, he practically was what I consider um, auditioning for that role by making some certain comments about the special counsel. And then what he did was, I felt kind of very resistant, if you will, or uh, not resistant, um, it was very slow in saying that he was going to release the report. And it said, I think he wouldn't have done that if the Democrat was really coming up hard on him. It just seemed to me that he was just really trying to come up with stuff to hold back. If uh, you had us spend our tax money investigating this stuff, this clearly something that why it was investigated. You need to put it out into the American people in the Congress to see. Okay, mm -hmm. and, I, and, 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 and there are people who feel that he might have been putting pressure on Mueller, not in terms of any corruption or anything, but to, to come on, if, you, if you're not going to find anything, it's time to wrap it up, time to wrap it up, time to wrap it up. So in a way, it's like Trump got what he wanted. He put somebody in there that he probably felt had the pull to kind of pressure, the, to, to kind of push the, the, the investigation to a close. And now he's trying to hold back from it, letting the American people see what, the, what it is. If you have nothing to hide, Hide nothing. Let it out. And you know, the thing too is so the investigation took, I don't know, almost two years or more than two years or whatever to take place. I find it interesting that from a Friday to a Monday, the Attorney General could go over it. And he didn't even go over the whole report. Four page then, summary. Yeah, a, and come up with a summary in two days. It's a bunch of nonsense. All it's of a bunch it. of nonsense. You know, come rich, on. rich white man win again. Yeah, it's My just take on it, I, I'm so. It, for me, it's so complicated. It. I I trust Mula. I do. For a certain, to a certain point, but he's a staunch Republican. And, and him and the, and the um, Attorney General are good friends. Their kids are friends and Thank everything. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I just find it I, interesting that it's wrapped up. You know, so here we go. Here we go. Yeah. Who do you trust? Who do you, you know, my heart is not there. I just don't, I just don't know who to trust. So I try and, 
Am I saying that I think Muller would have done something corrupt? No. But am I saying that this guy might have strong arm him into ending this? I think so. That's my suspicion. I don't have any proof. Uh, am I thinking that the president put this attorney general, who he knew is a friend of Muller, who he probably felt that Muller would be I'm telling you, uh, more inclined to walk with? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like quite the possible. organs of your body. Everything is connected. Mm -hmm. If you look at it, you know, so, so I... I it's so corrupt. I, I, I mean, don't really know what to believe. It, and a lot of it is, I know, I know that the, the report, some of it, because I worked at the UN, I have an idea of things have to be redacted. There right. are certain things that just... Absolutely. And the ongoing investigations in Southern District. Southern District have investigation going into this and other, other, other things that are going yeah. on. So we know that there would be some redacting, you know, mm -hmm. meaning to, to, to cover up certain information so it doesn't happen the other case. Yeah. So I understand that. Um, but don't, don't come with your... Um, he better not come with no with no um, executive privilege nonsense because listen, you can't dangerous. police yourself. You know, this is about you and what people think you have been involved in. So uh, the the you know it's it's very complicated and you know I'm looking at the Democrats too and I'm I, you know everything is so complicated to me. Mm -hmm. I I have to I need to seek peace, peace mm -hmm. in my heart. I can't. Because you know, one day I say something and another day I have to take it back. Mm -hmm. I, because I, you know, I don't know the full story. So you just have to wait and see what really is happening mm -hmm. to, to, to make a final decision. Yeah, it's, it, it's, a, it's a, you don't know what these things. I, I'm going to wait till, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to yeah. wait until that report comes out. And I'm going to listen with, with the brain that the good Lord give me yeah. and make a decision then and what I, what I believe and not believe because right now we don't know. We don't know. Uh, and that's what I'm saying with the, with the Attorney General. He should know better to try to hold this back because we need to know. The American people, we need to know. We don't know. We don't really know a lot. And, and you know what? You know why I suspect there might be something in there that he don't want us to see? You know that he started up again trying to um, cancel Obama, Obama, the Obamacare oh. for people with pre-existing condition? I whenever this president, anything. whenever this president there's something dirty is about to come his way or and might be coming, he tries to distract. Yeah. He comes with something outrageous, yeah. Yeah. you know. I don't believe that this guy is clean. That's my opinion. I, 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 do I think that maybe um, that it's possible that the attorney general kind of strung on the other guy into bringing it to a wrap and therefore he might not have done it quite the justice it deserves? I, I think that's possible. We don't know, and we can't we don't answer know. these questions. So yeah. All we do is just be peaceful and quiet and, and watch wait and see. And wait. And even when you wait, you still don't know. Yeah. You just have to, you know, as I say, we, we just take care uh, of ourselves. Take it with a pinch of salt. Shit. The travails of political life, Jesus Christ. Politics is a dirty, dirty business. Oh my yes. goodness. Even when you go in there clean, they will find a way to dirty you up. Mm -hmm. I heard, for instance, this morning where. The vice president, the former vice president Biden, oh. um, some woman is, is complaining that one day he touched her inappropriately. He touched her head and kissed her head. Oh, oh Jesus, Lord. We're getting but why ridiculous. why is she waiting until now? This is silly season. Oh, my why, God. Why, Honestly. Why now? Honestly. Why now, is that because, because people are right? talking about him being he might the be leader. a presidential yeah. candidate. So I, now this comes out. Yeah, I mean, and come on. Like, so then, is, don't is, touch is, anybody. Don't go near anybody. Don't keep and you're in don't human. keep your hands behind your back, everybody, because yeah. there there Ooh. is going to be somebody can say something. And I heard about he's a, he, that's the type of person he's very yeah. loving, yeah. you I mean, know, and mm -hmm. and for them to uh, just that's what we're missing. Away. That's what we're missing in this country. You mm -hmm. human love. Yeah, love. Real love. The real thing. We don't know what love yeah, is. Yeah, we don't know. We really don't know. A lot of people. You try to be nice with them or try to show them some sort, some form of like appreciation. They feel like you want them or you want mm -hmm. something from them or you know Dirty it's everything. just ridiculous. Ugh. Everything have to have a, an agenda. It's just I know. not something. Everything healthy. is made out of everything. Oh my it, it's god! It's crazy. Yeah. It's so crazy. Oh, we keep on praying, so. and we keep on keeping on. That's got to be yeah. by, by yourself. Keep by yourself. Right. You know, too, too long women have been living in a way where they had to put up with certain things and not speak up, but now I feel there are some cases where it's going over out of, out of bounds. It's out of order. We're now. getting ridiculous, silly with some things. We that's, do. That's my opinion. We're getting silly with some stuff. Like, really? Yeah. Me too. <laughs> no, I think Me Too, me too movement had its, had its place, and I think it's a good 
um, it, 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 it has a place. And it was something overdue for some kind of movement. But we don't want to take that movement and make it into something silly by people being over overreacting to stuff, is what I'm saying. When I see real stuff that requires the Me Too, the Me Too, uh, Me Too movement to be involved, um, I will say great for that movement. But 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 right. you know, everything has its exception to the rule or uh, 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 the drawback, and sometimes we just do it and we just follow it. So, oh dear. Well. Research, you know, we give up our Sundays because we take mainly on Sundays and we come out and it's been a joy doing this for you guys and being able to bring that information for you. We're not we're not experts and we don't pretend to be, but we try to research things that the average person is dealing with is 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 is, is going is, is going through in their everyday lives. Right. You know, things that come up in my life, in your life, and the next person out there. And we're hoping that by bringing them to the table and discussing them, that somebody out there would get some relief from it. It's been real. See you on the next episode. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bringing QXTV to you on YouTube has been a real labor of love. But we're going to ask one little favor. That you click on the like option below and the subscribe option below. That's right. Like us and subscribe to us. And if you want to know every time we load up a video, you can click on the notification bell and that will let you know every time we load up a video. But if you don't want to necessarily know every time we load up a video, you just want to like us and subscribe to us, just click on those options below so that we can continue bringing you this channel for years to come. Thank you for watching QXT.